Hello everybody, welcome to my second multiple choice question walkthrough for Atomic Structure. Have a go at these questions yourself, download them from the description, then watch the video and see how you've got on. This question is asking us which electron configuration will have only two unpaired electrons. We're only interested in the outermost subshells, and so for instance in the first one we have two p3. There are three p orbitals and each one will have one electron in each, because electrons spin free before you pair them up in an orbital. So A is the wrong answer because it will have three unpaired electrons. For B, we've got four electrons in the P subshell. We'll have two in the first orbital and one in each of the next two. So this is the correct answer because it will have only two unpaired electrons. In a test, we'd move on. But just to finish here, 3p5, that would only have one unpaired electron, and here 4s1, 3d5, that would actually have six unpaired electrons. So very definitely wrong, b is the correct answer. Here we're being asked about the isotopes of chlorine. We're told that there are two, one with a mass of 35, one with a mass of 37 and they don't occur in equal abundance. Chlorine 35 occurs 75% of the time, or three out of four, and chlorine 37 is one out of every four atoms of chlorine. And we've been asked which of the following statements is correct about the peaks you'd get in the mass spectrum for Cl2. So we're looking at the different combinations that you can make here. So clearly what we can have is two of them could be chlorine 35, or, both of them could be chlorine 37, or the one on the left could be 35 and the one on the right 37, or the other way round, 37 and 35. So when we total what each of these would add up to, we get 70 for the one on the top, and we get 74 for the next one, and then the bottom two both add up to 72. So we can instantly here rule out A and D because they don't give us peaks of all three of those options. We definitely have three different peak masses. And so then the question is, which is correct, B or C? So we need to factor in probability here. So there's a three out of four chance that this chlorine will be 35 and a three out of four chance that the other one will be. So in total, this combination has a likelihood of nine out of 16. And then the one on the right here, there's a one out of four chance that that will be chlorine 37 and a one out of four chance that one will be. So in total, this combination has a one in 16 probability. For the next two, it's three out of four and one out of four for the one on the left. So that's three out of 16. And similarly, three out of 16 for the one on the right. So that gives us three peaks in a nine to one to six ratio, so B. Here we're being asked which of these has the highest first ionization energy. Now, first of all, it's important to ascertain that all four of these elements are in period three. We need to remind ourselves that as we go across period three, the ionization energy goes up. And it's not a linear progression. It's a sort of a zigzag pattern. The first two, it goes straight up, then there's a dip, then it goes up for the next three, then there's a dip, and then it goes up for the last three. And so now it's important to place our elements along the line. Sodium is, of course, the first one, with its outer electron being S1. Aluminium is 3P1, and then silicon is 3P2, and chlorine 3P5. So we aren't hitting any of these dangerous spots where we've got the dip for the right-hand side. So chlorine is simply the right answer because it's going to have the second highest first ionization energy for the whole period is asking us about incomplete subshells. So in other words, which subshells are partially filled? Now, as a general rule, of course, the S block is the first two groups. So anything in group two will only have a complete S subshell in its outer energy level. So we can instantly rule out beryllium and calcium because they are found in group two and their electron configurations are shown here. And then anything in group zero will, of course, have a filled P subshell as its outer energy level. And anything to the right hand side of the D block will also have a full D subshell and a full S subshell. So that means we can rule out zinc. There are no noble gases here, but that was worth noting. And that means that germanium has to be the correct answer 
It is in group 4, which means it will have two electrons in its P subshell, so it is incomplete, and this is the correct answer. Here we're being asked which of these rows shows the correct number of subatomic particles in an ion of potassium-41. So first of all, it's potassium. So when we look up on the periodic table, we can see it's got an atomic number of 19, which means 19 protons. So we can rule out B and D because they have got the incorrect number of protons. Then we could check the electrons, and it's an ion, so it will have one less electron than normal, so that will be 18 confirming that row C is the correct answer because A would be for an atom of potassium. We could also check the neutrons because we've got time to spare and neutrons is 41 take away 19, so that gives us 22 neutrons, further confirmation that C is the correct answer. This question is asking us which of these atoms has got the largest atomic radius. Now, important to note that they are all in period three. And second important thing to note is that all the elements in period three have a smaller atomic radius as you work your way to the right hand side. And so sodium being the first element we encounter in period three will have the larger atomic radius. Magnesium will be just next in line because it's next along the period. Argon will be furthest to the right and chlorine just before it. So sodium, definitely the first. Nice quick question, don't need the full minute. Here we're being asked which one of the following atoms only has two unpaired electrons in its ground state, that's the lowest energy state. And so two unpaired electrons, we're expecting it to be in the P subshell. Well, helium only has two electrons in total, so that's 1s2. Beryllium has got four electrons, so it's 1s2, 2s2, so no unpaired electrons in those first two. Nitrogen and oxygen, they're in the P block, so these are our likely candidates. Nitrogen with its seven electrons finishes at 2P3. That means that all three of those P electrons will go into separate orbitals because they go in separately before pairing up. Whereas oxygen has got four P orbital electrons, so that means there'll be two doubly occupying the first orbital and then the next two will be single occupancy. So oxygen is the correct answer. It's got two unpaired electrons in its ground state. This question is about isotopes, chlorine 35 and 37, and it's about the molecular ion peaks for Cl2. We're simply asked, what is the number of molecular ion peaks that Cl2 will have? So we're looking at the different combinations that you can get from these two isotopes. So our two chlorine atoms could both be 35, and we could also have them both being 37. Or we could have a 35 and a 37, and a 37 and a 35. If we look at what the totals are for the masses of these molecular ions, we've got 70, 74, and the bottom two are both 72. So there will be three different peaks, which means that B is the correct answer. Another question about isotopes and molecular ion peaks here. We've got a formula C4H6Cl4, and we're being asked how many molecular ion peaks will be shown here. So again, we are looking at the combinations of chlorine atoms. We've got two options for each of them, 35 or 37. So we could have them all being 35, that's option one. Or we could have them all being 37, that's option two. Or we could have three of them being 35 and one of them being 37, or three of them 37 and one of them 35, that's option four. Option five is two of them could be 35 and two of them could be 37. So each of these rows adds up to a different mass. We don't need to know what the masses are. We need to know that there are five different options, so it is D. It doesn't matter which chlorines have which mass. These are the five combinations we can have. This question is asking us which of these statements are correct for these two different isotopes of iron. Now, the first one's about electron configuration, which is linked to atomic number. Iron has an atomic number of 26, so it has 26 electrons as an atom. As a 2 plus ion, which both of them are, it's lost two electrons, so it needs to add to 24. This adds up to 26, so too many electrons. B, both isotopes contain 26 neutrons. 
By definition, that is false. Isotopes have got different numbers of neutrons. And C also has to be false by definition, because iron-53 cannot have fewer protons than iron-56. If it did, it would not be iron. So they both have to have the same number of protons. So that means that D has to be correct. It's telling us that the heavier isotope will move more slowly than the lighter one. And that's how the time of flight mass spectrometer works. OK, that's the end of this multiple choice question walkthrough video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.